it for this morning, for this period that you already created for us to come in here and listen to what you are saying and to us. We pray that as we are going to share, may you open our inner ears, may you speak to us, and may you use me worthy before you in Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with the question. With the theme, speak, your servant is listening. Um, as the time has come, passing by, um, Monday, we looked at effective response. Tuesday, we spoke about message in listening. Wednesday, we were asking ourselves, who is your friend? Yesterday, we looked at the difference between listening and hearing. And today, we have one thing, that ultimate task to adhere to. Um, when someone calls you, there is normally a response. And we've seen how we respond to that. You respond, you give them a positive energy. When you respond using positive energy, you communicate something. And now this person has called you. You have responded using the positive energy. You have known whom you're responding to. You have understood that whatever they are going to communicate to you must be carrying some content in them. So now the question is, what is that that we're choosing to listen to? Before you choose to respond to someone, it is automatic that we have different responses to different people. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, it is true that sometimes when you are watching TV, when you are listening to speakers, when you are reading a, a piece, an article or something, most of the times, even when you're watching a movie, most of the times you find yourself finding the protagonist, the main actor, the main person of the, the, of the whole thing. For example, um, when you are listening to a radio station and then probably prime radio, and then you ask, um, who is on program? Then you hear, uh, like, oh, let me sit. It is automatic. Many times, even in our homes, when someone calls, you're like, who is calling? It is Jack. Uh, what is he telling us? You already have a bias about whatever they are going to communicate. It is not because it, it comes by mistake, no. It comes because these people have already set a certain pattern that makes you conclude and know them that makes you understand that this person cannot speak past this, cannot speak below this. You give people credit and value basing on their daily lives, their daily lives and how they react towards us. We give people relevance in responding to when they call us simply because of how they have led their life with our experiences. The ultimate task to adhere to comes or is welcomed when we know who is communicating. We are people who are very complicated, we Christians, that many times, even when a preacher is preaching, we have a tendency of asking, who is preaching at Moops? Uh, it is Elder Mangini. Who is preaching at Chambogo? It is uh, Matak Cyrus. Who is preaching in Banda? It is Pastor Kajoba. And you're like, ah, 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 I should go to Banda. I don't know whether we have this. But however much these are different people, there is normally a certain common message that is being delivered. I don't mean like there is a common message. It is a message to nurture either to 
point us at Christ, to nurture us through, or to lead us to a better destination. Who is calling Samuel? And after calling Samuel, does Samuel choose to pick the ultimate task that he is being called for? Being called at such an early age, the main, the main purpose here is response. And then choosing to listen to a friend advised Samuel that when this person calls again, tell them to speak for their servant is listening. Now, our interest is, what is the message? What is the message? Many times we are told that God is calling upon us. The question is, what message do we have? One person buys mangoes at the end of the day, very, very, very tired, very hungry. He had spent the whole day without eating, moves back to his place, reaching home. Um, everything was clear. He washed the mangoes. He was really super hungry. He had six mangoes. So he sat and said, let me first eat these mangoes, then I can look into something else and probably make up some food and eat. So he sits. He cuts through the first mango. He finds it rotten on one side. He cuts through the second mango. He finds it rotten. He puts that aside. He gets the second one, cuts through, rotten, rotten. He puts it aside. He's left with four mangoes. <clears throat> he gets the third one, cuts, it's rotten. Gets the other side, cuts, it is rotten. What he chooses to do, he switches off the light and says, come what me. He gets the three mangoes, the left mangoes, lights off. He decides to eat them without the knife. He just eats them. I don't want to see whatever is there. I don't want to be disappointed anymore. He eats the mangoes. I really don't know. He has removed the light and he has decided to eat the mangoes. Think about it. We are given a great commission. And this great commission is basically to go and teach people what the Lord has taught us. When you get to know the truth, you don't switch off the light and eat it alone and consume it by yourself, no. Take an example of lighting a candle. Uh, electricity has gone, you've gotten a candle, you light it, do you put it under the bed? Do you hide it because it's your own light? You want it to be your own light? Think about it. When you read Matthew 28, I'm speaking about the Great Commission. From verse, Matthew 28, from verse 16, he says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Um, concentration is on verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. We have what to teach friends. We have what to preach. We have what to communicate to the public. The main reason, the main problem we have is that we know the truth and we are too content. We are too comfortable with it. The task was not for us to know the truth and then be very comfortable about it. The task was know the truth, 
reach out to all nations, speak it out. In one way or the other, what atomic habits are you having towards fulfilling this given task? Are you adhering to it? You who knows, who understands, who perceives the Bible in all, have you gotten a time to preach, to speak, even if you're not speaking? Have you gotten time to build your life that it is a message to someone? Someone might be pushed to ask you, but uh, Lucky, what, what makes you, what motivates you in this direction? What pushes you in this direction? At your place of work, are you that faithful that a person really looks at you and is really wanting to know what is happening with you? Are you preaching in a way that is adhering to our Great Commission? What atomic habits are you taking on to see that you are in your own lane, you are trying to fulfill that Great Commission? I pray to us and ask of us that in whatever way that we are handling our lives, this morning, may we look at trying in one way or the other to win a star in our crown. In one way or the other, let's try to speak to, to a, 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 an apostle Grace Lubega disciple into correctness may the lord lead us through this task and may the lord put it upon us that we are tasked to at least find out if we can really cause an impact in someone's life in whichever way may we humble ourselves for prayer dear lord in heaven we are human we are flesh we have perception, we judge, we set boundaries, we cut off friends. We know how to choose good and bad friends. We know how to say, we know how to identify, we know how to see the good ones, the bad ones, the lukewarm ones. We know how to not to choose we know how to say that we cannot approach this society because they are like this and this and this. The Great Commission to us wasn't to a specific people. It was to all the world. Dear Lord, even to those we cannot, we fear to physically reach out to. Please give us a lifestyle that messages your commission. Give us a lifestyle that preaches your commission dear lord father we are tasked to reach out to everyone to preach unto them may you first help us preach unto our souls to learn how to listen to your call when it is your call and give us better methods on how to approach these challenges we pray believing that you are with us from this day onwards until your second coming and you're with us throughout this day in preparation for your Sabbath. We pray for your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.